What's up, y'all? So we're just going to start off this video with the things that you will need, all right? You're going to need a baking sheet. You're also going to need some parchment paper. Um, I prefer to use that than foil. You'll also need a grater, like a cheese grater. I use the big sides. You're going to need enough ginger to fill your mason jar. You're also going to need your choice of oil. I like to use avocado oil. And then, of course, your mason jar. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take your parchment paper and lay it down flat on your baking sheet. I like to use parchment paper because I feel like foil would low key degrade the quality of the ginger oil. And then you're going to take your ginger, which has been washed thoroughly and dried. And here you'll see me just start to grate that ginger onto a plate. You could do it straight onto the pan if you want, but I like to do it on a plate because it doesn't move as much. And as you can see, I first started grating it on the small side. I then switched to the big side just because it doesn't need to be that small and it's just so much harder. I struggled so hard. So if you don't have one of these and you have to go out and purchase one, I would definitely suggest purchasing one that has bigger holes. It'll make your life so much easier. As you're nearing the end of your ginger, you want to make sure that you are very careful because it is quite easy to cut yourself, especially if you have a new grater. All right, so now that my ginger is completely grated, I'm just spreading it across my pan as evenly as I can get it. Um, I wanna make sure that it dehydrates at a nice and smooth rate. If you have big old balls of ginger, the middle is not gonna get dehydrated as quickly as the rest of it. And that is something that we definitely want to avoid because we wanna keep it in the oven at the lowest temperature and for the least amount of time possible. So this next part really just depends on your oven. You wanna make sure that it's not too hot so that the ginger doesn't like cook and burn. You just wanna get it dehydrated. Now, if you have a dehydrator, that's even better. I don't, so I just put my oven on warm and I put a spoon in there to crack it. It's similar to what you do when you are baking bread or something like that. And um, occasionally I look in there and mix it around to make sure that it's even. So depending on your oven, this could take quite some time. I started at 8.15 and I finished it up at 12.55 a.m. <laughs> now, depending on who you are, you might wanna make your ginger oil a little bit differently. I choose to dehydrate mine because it keeps longer and I don't have to refrigerate it or worry about it going spoiled every couple weeks. So that's why I choose to dehydrate all of the water out of it before combining it with my oil. So this is what my ginger looks like once it's all dried out. Another reason why I choose to dry it out is because I really like to limit the amount of time that it has to grow bacteria. If you leave it out to dry, it's in my opinion and just with my logic, it's more likely to, you know, be susceptible to growing bacteria, which would make your ginger oil not keep as long. So I just prefer to limit that. So granted, when you dry herbs, you don't usually get as much of the signature scents and aromas that you would get when you infuse just regular fresh herbs with oils, but you still get a very nutrient rich product. The oil that I'm using today is going to be avocado oil. I really like using this oil on my hair and on my skin. It's very lightweight and it's also really good to cook with. So I usually have it on hand. And after putting all of my ginger into my cute little mason jar, I'm just going to pour that oil on till I get to the really, really tippy tip top. So you see, I'm finishing off a bottle and I'm going in with a second bottle just to make sure I have enough in there. The reason why I like using mason jars is just because it's really easy to get an airtight closure on them. If you have the dark blue or amber colored mason jars, that would be even better because it protects it from light that can kind of mess with the nutrients of the ginger oil. But if you don't, I would definitely go ahead and put it in a cool dry place for about six weeks before you fully strain it off and make sure that you shake it every so often, every day, every couple of days or whenever you remember. After that amount of time, you can go ahead and strain it off with just a regular kitchen strainer. Just make sure it's really clean. Now this is what my oil looks like after two weeks. You can tell it's kind of already changing color a little bit, but I'm still not going to strain it off yet. 
So a couple last things to remember are definitely going to be that your oil will change color, all right? With my avocado oil, I do experience it getting darker, so don't be alarmed if that happens. That's normal. The next thing is to shake it often. Shaking it often, just to me, logically, it seems like it would infuse better that way, making sure that everything is being mixed up and all processing together. Next thing is to make sure that you give your oil time. I know six weeks sounds like a long time, especially if you're rushing to do something or you need it for a recipe or you want hair growth now. But personally, I'd rather do things, you know, in a way that they'll last longer and be the highest quality. So I try to make these things ahead of time before I actually need them. The next thing is definitely going to be to store it in a cool and dry place. That way you don't get any bad bacteria growing in your bottle or anything wild like that. And then last but not least, I know you saw me just use metal stainless steel and to my knowledge, stainless steel is okay to use on oils, but it's always preferred to use glass utensils on your oils, not wood because wood absorbs a lot of different chemicals and you know food particles and things like that and plastic is just completely bad altogether so i would never suggest that but if you have anything glass like glass spoons or mixers definitely try to use that all right so that about sums this video up make sure to leave me a little unicorn in the comments section below if you made it all the way to the end also make sure you like subscribe comment and share follow all my social media accounts right down there and i will actually physically see you with like my face in the next video so make sure you guys are keeping your lights on remember that i love you so much and i'll see you in the next one peace